So okay, uh, today I want you to talk a little bit more about AM of physics, just today, and we won't <laughs> bring this up again. And um, I guess, so if this is an area that, um, so, so today is a good day to talk about AMO physics because as the, um, this page says, research in AMO physics has a long history. In fact, you could say that over all these areas of research in modern physics, AMO physics is the original one. AMO physics is the one that most directly relates to quantum mechanics. So, um, so, so that's what we do in AMO physics. And a lot of what we do really relies heavily on this optical part of AMO physics. The optical part describes not the, you know, not that the optics that you learned um, in, uh, at the beginning of this semester, geometric optics and physical optics, not that those are the active area of research, but those form the basis of the instrumentation that we use. The tools that we use to um, kind of figure out how atoms are interacting with each other and molecular interactions. And what I will tell you is that if you're um, looking for a kind of a case study or some kind of um, um, something that you can go into on your own and kind of to see what things are involved, lasers are, um, lasers are probably area where you do find the most uh, fruitful. I think your textbook has a section dealing with the lasers. You can read it. You can you know, read on Wikipedia. And um, one thing I want, to, uh, want you to demonstrate with how um, study of lasers brings together almost everything that's involved in AMO physics is, um, so I'm just using the simulation to kind of illustrate that. So let me show you. Mm. What? It didn't later. It didn't complain before. Oh. Anyways, <laughs> um, so so laser is used in AMO physics as a tool. So this is our source of light, and um, like everyone knows about lasers, right? And you've heard of special properties of laser: uh, monochromatic, coherent, and there was one more, collimated. Is that it? Yeah. Um, but um, lasers are very relevant to AMO physics from the other aspect as well. So, um, so I guess this is just a simulating a lamp and it's showing kind of interaction of light with a single atom. And these are the energy levels of the atom. And we talked about the Bohr model, so you feel comfortable with the idea of energy levels that the electron in this atom has these particular levels. And there might be more, but these two are levels that we are interested in, for example. So this is just the interaction of light with atom, and that's a kind of, at the very basic level, what we do in atomic physics, AMO physics. And what this tab of the simulation represents is the, how lasers work. Um, do people here know what uh, laser stands for? No. Laser, I mean, you know, people say the word laser like it's one, um, it's a word, but it's an, actually an acronym. What do you think L stands for? Light. Yeah, good. Light. Um, I guess it might be hard to guess A unless you know it. So is S, so is E. R. It's kind of related to the very first one. Radiation. Radiation. Radiation, yeah. All right, so let me fill in the, so those are the two words you could have guessed from what you know so far. <laughs> let me give you the rest of the words. Light, amplification, by, oops, by, stimulated, emission of radiation. And actually the first thing that was um, discovered or invented was major, 
microwave amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. And when they were able to build a version of major that operated in the visible range, that's the laser. <laughs> and um, when you look at how normally light interacts with the atom, this whole amplification part is the strange, or strange um, kind of puzzling part. Because you know the atom, it absorbs light. It doesn't really produce light. And the reason for that is in the most thermal states, the most of these, uh, the atoms, they are in the ground state energy level. So at room temperature, um, so all these atoms are represented as being in the ground state. So when you shine light on it, for example, then all this light, it gets absorbed and, um, oh wait, maybe I made a lamp. So uh, most of the time what happens is um, the, the light doesn't get amplified. It gets, um, it gets, um, it, it gets absorbed. <laughs> and the way to get light amplification is by arranging things in such a way that something called a stimulated emission happens. And this is uh, something that I would encourage you to you know, search it on your own, read about what st stimulated emission is. It's a little bit too advanced for us to cover in physics first, so we won't. But I can kind of demonstrate what that looks like in operation of a laser. So let me see. Um, so I think I need to enable mirrors at both ends. So it kind of traps light, at least the ones that are emitted on this end. Um, but you are not seeing any light amplification. Um, if I increase its lamp light, it won't really do anything. Um, it, you know, it's putting more atoms in the ground state more quickly into this upper energy level, but like it's, nothing interesting is still happening. So what really needs to happen is there's something called a population inversion. So remember what I said about most of the atoms being at ground, um, ground state energy. Oops, oh wait, wait, I think. Yeah, so actually with this, you are kind of getting this, uh, this is beginning of laser uh, because I had a mirror reflectivity at 100%, it's kind of building up even though it's not proper. Uh, let me bring it down to 95. Because uh, right now the whole thing isn't really, 50? The whole thing isn't optimal, it shouldn't really be building up, but. Um, so, um, so for most of the, um, when it's in thermal equilibrium, most of the atoms are in the ground state. Even at higher temperatures, there will always be more atom in the ground state than in the excited state. So what you need to do for working of a laser is you need to, um, you need to somehow create a situation where more, there are more atoms in this upper, um, more atoms in this excited state than there are in the ground state. That's kind of what you're seeing here from time to time. Let me set up the situation for this to happen more easily. So let me, uh, well, turn off the light. So with this light off, then, um, so the thermal equilibrium state is practically everything in the ground state. And raising the temperature doesn't really help the matters. By shining light on it, you create a, um, put this system out of the thermal equilibrium and it, um, out of the thermal equilibrium and um, that puts some more atoms here and that still doesn't, so you, you see no amplific, uh, amplification of blue light because there are never really that many um, atoms in this high energy state. But what I can, now you can do this with the actual atoms, but you can choose energy levels <laughs> uh, suitably arranged so that the lifetime of this higher energy state is lower. Then as soon as the atoms are excited to this level, it'll decay either to ground level or this level. And for high, so this is called a pump light. It's optically pumping the atoms from lower energy state to higher energy state. If you have high enough pumping power, high enough rate of atoms going here, and then um, at least maybe 50% of them decaying here, then you start to build, this is called a population inversion. 
So at thermal equilibrium, they're supposed to be more in the ground state, but now there's more in the excited state. Um, so that's a population, so, so that's called a population inversion. And now if you didn't have any mirrors, then, um, so you know, if you had no mirrors, then um, you would get this population inversion and you wouldn't really get laser. So now can I, wonder if I can do, um, yeah, let, I think I can kind of highlight this. Um, we, so right now, almost all the atoms are in this state, right? And this is kind of cartoon version of uh, description of stimulated emission. So you get spontaneous emission when these atoms decay to the ground state. So let me just uh, scroll forward a little bit. Ah, here's a spontaneous emission. One of the atoms transitioned to the ground state and spontaneously emitted this photon. And I think that one's just gonna go away. Yeah, okay, I have to wait a little bit. Um, all right, one more, here, this, see this spontaneous emission? Now, stimulated emission happens when this photon interacts with an atom that's already in the excited state. This uh, light can actually stimulate emission of a photon from this atom. Let me see if that happens. Yeah, oh, I guess it happened from this atom. And you see this double the photon there, right? That's, that's the simulation way of indicating the second photon is the stimulated photon. It's a, a photon from the stimulated emission. So that's how light amplification happens. So if you don't have any mirrors and then all these kind of go off into infinity and you don't really get amplification overall, that's why you need these mirrors. Once you have mirrors, then some of these spontaneous emissions, they're going in the correct direction to be bouncing back and forth between mirrors. And as they go, as they bounce back and forth, they stimulate more of the stimulate emission from more of the atoms in this state. And what you get is laser. And this is really the reason laser light is coherent, because the the photons that have been stimulated, it comes out in the same mode as the photon that stimulated it. Same wavelength, the same polarization, same, it's, it's the clone of the photon that stimulated it. And um, so that's laser. So anyways, um, that's the kind of long description of laser. Uh, I would just encourage you, you know, if this is some area of research that interests you, laser is, is really a focal point, both the use of laser as the instrumentation and building of the laser as um, um, the physics involved in that. So now what I want to show you is, okay, so all this is, well not, well maybe it's boring. Uh, it's something you can, you should look up on your own. 